Welcome to my channel. My name is Nicole and I like to do fashion DIYs. And in today's video, I am going to be sharing with you my do's and don'ts on making patchwork denim. So I have previously worked with patchwork denim in a different tutorial. I made this adorable little patchwork shoulder bag and if you have seen that video, you will know that I struggled working with the patchwork. There were a lot of things that I had learned in the process of making it that I wish I had known before I had started. And that is why I have made this video today to make it a little bit easier for you guys if you do decide to tackle the patchwork denim. Obviously, you can use any fabric for patchwork. I just find denim to be the most difficult to work with because of how thick it is and how much it frays. So that is why I wanted to kind of showcase all of the things that I would and wouldn't do while making patchwork denim. And yeah, so before I get into the tutorial, I just want to remind you to give this video a big thumbs up if you like what you are seeing and please subscribe to stick around for more denim and fashion tutorials. Let's get into the tutorial. Okay, so one of the things I love about doing a patchwork project is the fact that you get to use up old scraps that you don't really know what you would be doing with them otherwise. So I have a pair of jeans that I have previously cut up for previous projects, but I also thrifted a couple little boy jeans from my last trip to the thrift, which I am planning to cut into denim shorts and then use the remaining fabric to create patchwork denim. Okay, so when cutting my patchwork pieces out, one thing that I did the first time that I regret doing was cutting out pieces that were already on a seam. I thought this like looked cool and don't get me wrong, it really does. But when sewing, you're actually sewing like about four or five layers of fabric through your sewing machine because there's already a seam here to begin with. So there's already added bulk and then I'm adding more bulk on top of it. Whew. So when I'm cutting out these strips, I'm just going to take my pieces and cut down each side of the seam to open it up. Now that all my seams have been removed, I am left with the denim fabric pieces. It's time to start thinking about what I want my pieces to look like. So I do want to experiment with size. I don't want it to be super uniform and I want there to be bigger and smaller pieces. I think that also allows for less sewing. So the bigger the pieces are, the less sewing you'll have to end up doing and the smaller the pieces are obviously the more sewing you will have to end up doing so kind of gauge that on your skill level and your frustration level because patchwork is not easy and it is frustrating especially if you are using denim because denim actually has stretch in one direction and not necessarily in the other and that is something I didn't look at or think about when I was working on my first bag and that is something I'm going to be taking into consideration this time. Sometimes if you have too much stretch going one way, the bag can kind of warp and twist, um, and I don't really wanna do that. So I'm gonna keep that in mind when sewing my pieces together. Okay, so moving on to the cutting portion. And I'm not gonna lie, this is probably the most time consuming part. Or maybe the sewing part is time consuming. Well, they're both, it's all time consuming. So if you're looking for ways to cut down on the time, I would recommend using a rotary blade when cutting out your patch pieces. It does make things a lot easier and a lot quicker, but keep in mind if you're using a rotary blade, you are going to want to also be using a cutting mat and a metal ruler. Um, so you do need to have a couple extra supplies if you're going to take that route. Otherwise, fabric scissors are just as good, but it is a lot more time consuming. So when working with my pieces, I am going to be measuring out pieces in two and a half inch increments. So I'm either gonna do two and a half inches or five inches for the width. And for the length, I'm either going to make it a square or I am going to make it any length in between just to have some variety in my patches. It's also helpful to use the grid on your cutting mat to line up your ruler and your blade. If you want to keep this process as simple as possible, I recommend keeping the pieces the same size. 
now when it comes time to sew everything together, I really learned from the last time doing this that serging the edges or finishing the edges so they're not raw, specifically when you're working with denim, if you're working with a different fabric, you can probably get away with it, but because I'm working with denim and it does fray, I do want to make sure the edges are clean, mostly because it helps with the longevity of the bag and it'll keep it lasting longer. And if I'm gonna put all this time and work into it now, I might as well make it last. So you have a kind of a few options of what you can do here. So for the last project, I didn't complete the edges and I just sewed all of my pieces together with my straight stitch on my sewing machine. So I'm going to try to kill two birds with one stone here by actually sewing all my pieces together using my serger instead of my straight stitch machine. If you do not have a serger, you can definitely still use your straight stitch domestic machine. Yeah, let's start putting these pieces together. So you have a few options when it comes to sewing if you want to finish the edges. The first way would be to serge or zigzag all the pieces before sewing them together with a straight stitch. The second option would be to sew everything with this zigzag stitch on your sewing machine using this multi-stitch zigzag option. And the final option would be sewing all the pieces together with a serger if you have one available to you, which is what I did while making this patchwork. I recommend sewing individual strips first, then arranging them in a way you like them before sewing them all together. I like to make sure not too many of the same denim patches are touching. When working with a variety of sizes of patchwork, it takes a little bit more forethought when sewing to make sure the pieces fit together. Okay, so this is my patchwork so far, um, and this is what the back of it looks like. And honestly, so far, it's turning out better than the first time I did it. I am happy I'm kind of tackling sewing the pieces together and cleaning up the edges at the same time. So I definitely would really recommend using a zigzag stitch if you don't have a serger when putting your pieces together. This is pretty much the most time consuming part, obviously, sewing all the pieces together. Um, I might not have enough. Well, I don't think I do have enough, so I will be cutting up more pieces. So I'm just going to keep doing this and listening to a podcast as I sew away. And I will come back when it's all put together. It's done. So this is my denim patchwork that I have sewn. And at this point I have run out of fabric. So this is all I have. So since I have made all this patchwork, I obviously can't let it go to waste. So I have actually decided to make another patchwork bag that I am not actually going to be filming the process of. On my YouTube channel, I might do like a little real version of it or something like that, but to be honest, I don't even have all the supplies I need for the bag, but I am going to cut out the pattern pieces because that is one of the most difficult things I found when working with the patchwork was after I cut my pattern pieces, all of my seams started to separate. So if you find that that happens to you, I think that happened to me mostly because I was using a straight stitch because I have used a serger. I don't think that's going to happen to me this time, but in case it does happen, I'm going to show you what my fix is for it. It's a little tedious, but it's worth it in the long run. I promise. When cutting out your pattern pieces, you definitely want to make sure you pin down the pattern so it won't slide around on you while cutting. After your pieces are cut out, you may notice some seams might be unraveling near the cut line. Unfortunately, that will just get worse if you don't close up those seams. So you will have to go back in with your sewing machine and back tack that part. Do that to any seam that is unraveling. Then I went around the raw edge with my serger one more time to finish the raw edge. One more thing I wanted to mention as well, if you find that as you're cutting out your pattern, you are running out of the patchwork fabric or you don't have enough of it, the best thing about working with patchwork is that you can remove pieces from areas you didn't necessarily cut and jigsaw them where you need them to be so you can have enough fabric when you're cutting out your pieces. So I didn't necessarily have to do that with these two pieces because I had enough, but I will be making a piece that goes in between because this is gonna be a circle bag. So for the piece that's going to be going into the middle, I will probably need to rejig my fabric to make space for it. So I will be taking pieces and moving them so I have extra long fabric.
So I pretty much had to seam rip the bottom two strips and attach the two ends to each other to make them extra long. Okay, so that is basically it for today's do's and don'ts while working with patchwork. And I hope you guys found this video helpful. And if you want to see how this bag is going to turn out, I would like to also see myself, but I'll probably just be working on it off camera for the next week or so. And if you want to see how that turned out, I'll probably be documenting the process on my Instagram. So if you'd like to keep up with that, I will have it linked below. And yeah, I feel like that's everything. I will catch you in the next one. Bye.